Oh, welcome to the contracting guy. I have a veteran who sent in the following email. He says, actually it's a she. She said, hey contracting guy, my name is Margaret and I'm from Georgetown, Indiana and I have a question. Whenever I've gone to the SBA or to PTAX, I'm asked about a capability statement. Are capability statements important? Well, Margaret from Georgetown, Indiana, I'll answer that in just a moment. Well, Margaret from Georgetown, Indiana, let me share with you what I consider a dirty little secret about capability statements. For me, I consider capability statements to be totally useless. I got that. Totally useless. And the reason is, is that as a contracting officer, I have no time to check out every capability statement that comes across my desk. Dwight Eisenhower, when he was the commander of forces in Europe, would say, a plan is useless, but planning is essential. In this case here, capability statements are not necessarily for the contracting people. Let me explain. Whenever I've gone to a meet the buyer, one of the common phrases that I would use and my colleagues would use would be, well, you know, what you should have is a capability statement. Now, I consider that to be a blow-off line. And the reason is, is that I have nothing else to say to you. So uh, here, let me give you some advice. Create a capability statement. And, and for some, they may go, okay, that sounds like a good idea. So capability statements are pushed as the, uh, the normative process for uh, small businesses. The reality is, is that a capability statement, when it's discussed in that fashion, are useless. Where the capability statement really gets its teeth and its power is the analysis that goes into understanding the capability itself. A capability statement, when a contracting officer looks at it, they may have a few seconds to look at it. And if it doesn't resonate with them at that moment, they toss it. But if you target your capability statement to exactly what that contracting officer is looking for or what that his agency or organization needs, he may be more receptive. What I have found more often is that it is a blow-off line. But that doesn't mean that a capability statement isn't valuable. Remember what Eisenhower said, plans are bad, planning is essential. So uh, our no plan survives implementation. Here, capability statements are a tool to get you to understand who you are in the face of what you're, le uh, you're moving toward with the federal government. So if you understand yourself, you're then going to be able to respond better to uh, solicitations. Capability statements have a lot of good information, but I see them more as a summary, uh, a definitive summary of who you are as a business. If you're just hell-bent on having a capability statement, then make sure that if you're going to use one and distribute it, that it is tailored to the agency you're looking at. A generic capability statement is like a generic resume. It appeals to no one and interests no one. So your capability statement must be targeted and focused. So takeaway here, capability statement can be useful if you target it, but it is essential because it captures all the information about you, your business, and it allows you to, to better project it you know, when it comes time for a solicitation or express to someone what do you do. 
So, Margaret from Georgetown, Indiana, I hope I have shared with you my sentiments and belief on the capability statement. I, believe, I tell you that I am out of the, uh, uh, the norm for that. But I can share with you with my heart that over my experience of 30 years in the contracting field, I have never seen one of those things actually useful other than to tell someone to go fill it out. So with that being said, do one, but do it for yourself. That's where you're going to make money at it. This is the contracting guy. I'm out.